All right. So this is uh, where we are so far. So far, so far. So far, so far, I mixed my paint and I got a color which is close to what I want. So I've just been using this um, piece of foam and it's nothing too complicated right now. Just dab, dab, dab to create the pattern. So this is the first um, color I'm using. And I'm just basically dip it and dab it to create the texture I'm looking for for this backdrop. Different textures would determine, different textures would need different patterns to make. You know, there is some you need a brush, you need a roller, depending even some you need a um, pressure, pressure spray, pressure spray. You know, you put the paint in the spray bottle and then you kind of spray it. You know, that's also gonna give you something different. So when it comes to the texture, there's all kinds of textures and there's all kinds of ways to achieve different textures. But for the, tex for the texture I need right now, for this backdrop, I'm using this dab dab method where I'm just dabbing and dabbing. It takes um, patience. It takes patience, but slowly, slowly. I'm going to leave the first layer after this dab dab. I'm going to leave it to dry for a bit. Like I said, I'm not using the paint straight out of, you know, the bucket color. I basically mixed my own paint. I mixed white and a bunch of yellow and all that to achieve this color. I'm going to top it up with a diff with a lighter layer because um, right now this still feels more like close to beige which is not what i'm looking for i'm looking for something close to off-white but i'm going to use this as a base layer so this is just going to be underneath it's, it's just going to be underneath of that final layer you know just to give it a bit of um, dimension i guess that's the word to give it depth so i'm going to dab this one in i'm going to dab this in dab dab you know nothing it's not rocket science i'm just going to keep dabbing it then leave it to dry for a bit then put a lighter shade overall on top when I'm done, the main thing is these textures need to be very, very soft. I can't see any um, hard edges, you know. You, you know, if you look there, you see a bit of um, strokes kind of stuff. Eventually, all that is going to be softened out. So I just keep dabbing. Maybe I shouldn't have gone round. I should have... Um, Because now the center becomes a bit tricky to reach, but that's not a problem. And for this one, to be honest, I do not want any kind of vignette. You know, some canvases, you want this vignette effect. For this... Um canvas I do not want any vignette effect
What do you want? Huh? Yeah, but I'm in the middle of something now. All right, so dab, 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 you know. I'm using a piece of foam, by the way, nothing complicated. I'm going to dab that in just to start off the textures. If you notice, you could see even with this layer, you can already see it's already getting a bit textured because you see the previous white underneath already. You know, let me move. All right. You know, in case you're wondering what I'm trying to get as a finished look. In case you're wondering what I'm trying to achieve as a finished look, let me Okay, so as a finished look, basically I'm trying to achieve something, something something similar to this is what I'm going for. Okay, something like this is what I'm trying to, something like this is what I'm trying to achieve. It takes a process. Okay. So something like this is what I'm trying to go for. The color is not there yet, as you see. Mine is still closer to beige. Well, this is you know something slightly different, but we're gonna get to that. So I'm just gonna take this off and then continue painting but that's just a a close um, reference to what i'm looking for maybe i can put this maybe i could put this to somewhere here just so i have a visual reference also okay okay so I have that on the screen somewhere there. So I keep dabbing. Mine is still a bit close to beige. And I'll put the lighter shades eventually on top of this layer just to give me that color. But you see how soft that one is, right? Mm -hmm. 
this is still close to beige ish but also the color dries up lighter also by the way so we have to take note that generally paint dries brighter so if it's slightly dark now when it dries it gets a bit brighter that's the point i'm making Okay, dab, dab, dab. I'm not pressing it in too much. If not, it's going to get flat. So I'm just kind of dabbing, not pressing it in too much. Technically, I should have gone in this way, meaning I should have gone from side to side, side to side, and ended at the end here. But um, for some reason, I was going round, which usually, when you're using a stick, is cool. When you're using a rolling stick, for this technique, um, I shouldn't have gone round. I should have gone... Um, from side to side because now the center gets a bit stuck but it's not a big problem because I'm still gonna get to it and also you know depending on what you're trying to get like if you're trying to get that vignette look that's where this method of going round and round works because generally the sides the edges are darker then the center is always slightly more bright but that's a different texture entirely. This one, I don't want it to be vignetted in any way. I want it to be even and soft all through. So there's no point of this going around for this one. But we've already started. So I'm just gonna have to stretch and slowly get to the center. I'll leave this layer to dry up for a few minutes, maybe 30 minutes actually. I'm going to go out and come back. Then I'm going to roll it with a slightly um, brighter shade. And when combined, everything should come together to give me something similar to what I'm looking at on the screen. This is not bad as it is, but I already have something close to beige. I don't want another beige. I want something ivory, almost off-white. That is what I, I want. That's what I need right now something close to off-white. When this dries up, it's, the colors um, shift a bit. But yes, even when this dries, it's still gonna be close to that skin tone look, that skin tone color. Um, it's not gonna be ivory. So I know that this color is darker, which is not a problem because it's gonna add depth. By the time I put the top layer, it's going to add to it. Okay. So I'm just dabbing the parts I see that have um, these edges. I basically just soften it. Where I see strong, you know, sh block shape of this thing. 
I just soften it up. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. I'm going to leave it for a few minutes. Go out. Come back. The center is a bit of an issue to get to at this point, but it's going to be fine. Okay. It's very sunny outside. After priming, I ended up not taking it outside. I ended up not taking the outside because it just kind of dried up indoors. You know? Open windows, open door, open ventilation basically helped it to dry up. But when I get the final paint in, I will take it outside. So yeah, this is a darker shade, it's going to be our base, then I'm going to come in with, top it up with a brighter shade. So, so basically this is just going to give it depth and yeah, just keep dabbing, just keep dabbing, don't press too hard. Because, you know, I still want to see those whites in between. I still want to see those whites in between. Okay. I'll leave it to dry for a bit, then I'm going to get into the center. When it dries up a bit so i'll be able to kind of get in there a bit more so i'm gonna leave it at this for now i'll go and i'll come back